When I see stuff like this, I do understand where it's coming from. It's really coming from a love for chickens and I really do appreciate that. But I do feel like it's misguided and I feel a responsibility to say something about it, not just for my own ego's sake, definitely not that, but for the sake of our communities, for the sake of our planet, for the sake of our children's future. Okay, I know it's cold, but I'm gonna put you down. She's so cute. I love you. I'm gonna put you down. Hello, friends. My name is Dahlia. I'm a backyard chicken educator, also known as the president of Chickenlandia. Chickens have been the best way for me to find peace and joy in my life, and I wanna help you find that too. So by the time you see this, um, it'll probably be about two weeks since I sat down and I read this article and I don't wanna say the name of the article, but basically the gist of it was, you know, it was acknowledging the egg crisis that we're in, the lack of eggs and the prices of eggs being so elevated right now. And it was basically discouraging people from getting backyard chickens as a way to kind of deal with this egg crisis. And I think they're coming from an important place, a place of compassion for backyard chickens, and they don't wanna see chickens suffer. So I totally get that. But when I saw this, I, I really felt a responsibility to kind of counter some of the arguments that she makes. It was just so well, it was very well written and it's a lot of the things that I've been hearing pe from people who are discouraging people from getting backyard chickens right now. So I just decided to take that article and address it, but I am not attacking the writer of this article. This is about starting a conversation. That's what Chickenlandia is about. I just don't believe in, you know, just being negative towards someone else who's trying to do something good in the world. So the author starts out by sharing her realization um, of how expensive chicken keeping is. And I, I actually really related to this part because, you know, it was just a few years ago or my husband one day, he said, you know, each of these eggs is a hundred dollars. You realize that, don't you? <laughs> And I was at that point spending a lot of money on my chickens and I still spend a lot of money on my chickens, okay? But I actually think that the reason why here in the Western world, we think, many of us think of chicken keeping as being this expensive hobby, it's because of the way that we think of chicken keeping, which is very different from a lot of the rest of the world. And yes, it has to do with factory farms. When you are raising baby chicks in a very controlled environment, when you are only feeding them their chick starter, when you're buying equipment that you feel that you need in order to keep them, that is gonna cost money. But if we look beyond that factory farm influence and look at how things were done in the past, we can find a way to raise baby chicks and keep chickens where we don't have to spend that much money. For instance, the author talks about, you know, having to buy special feeders and waterers for their baby chicks. And yes, you can absolutely do that. I have many of them, okay? But all you really need is like a, a couple of small bowls. For the water, you just need to make sure that it is safe. You need to, you know, probably put some marbles in it or some smooth rocks in it so that the baby chicks can't immerse themselves in the water, but they can take a sip from it and that it doesn't tip over. But baby chicks don't need a special dish to eat out of. They just need a dish. And it might require a little bit of extra cleanup on your part, but it doesn't require a lot of money. And I think that most people in the world are actually not using uh, this equipment to feed and water their baby chicks. Regarding baby chick feed, which is called starter, you know, I get where the author is coming from because you, it is best for you to buy chick starter for baby chicks so that you can make sure that they get all the nutrition they need, especially production breeds, to grow into strong, healthy, resilient chickens. But if you watch a mother hen with baby chicks in the chicken yard, she will be taking those baby chicks everywhere. They will be eating little pieces of foliage. They will be eating kitchen scraps if that's part of their environment. They will be eating insects. Their diet is going to be varied and they will likely be 
very resilient because baby chicks raised by a mother hen usually do better than those raised by people. It doesn't mean I think you shouldn't raise baby chicks um, in a brooder, but it does seem that baby chicks raised by mother hens are more resilient in general. So when you have your baby chicks, they don't only have to eat their chick starter. That should be the majority of what they eat, but you can also supplement their diet with some good healthy kitchen scraps. You can give them a little bit of hard boiled egg. You know, you can bring them outside and they can have a little bit of, of grass and stuff when you take them outside and expose them to the outside environment. There are a lot of opportunities to kind of mitigate the price of that starter feed. Another thing that you can do is ferment their feed and that will not only increase the bioavailability of the nutrients in the feed, it will also increase the volume of the feed and make your dollar spread farther. So that that's another way that you can save money and it doesn't have to be super expensive buying tons of chick starter. The article goes on to talk about how expensive it can get once your baby chicks move outside to their coop and run. And she is absolutely 100% right. It can get expensive building a coop, building a run, especially if you're gonna make it predator proof. Those costs can really add up, but there are things that you can do to help bring those costs down. For instance, you can use, with a little bit of planning, repurposed materials. You can go in with another family or with, a, you know, a, communities can get together and they can share some of those expenses. The next point in the article is something that I hear a lot. You know, there's people that they just kind of jump on the, the backyard chicken bandwagon because they think that it's gonna be easy and cheap and then they're really surprised by the fact that it isn't or they make some really big mistakes and they have losses in their flock. That is really hard, you know, especially for very, you know, people with a lot of empathy, you know, when they see animals suffering, when they see people being irresponsible, how, how you know, they perceive to be irresponsible. It, it's hard to witness that. But I will always say that the answer to this is not less people keeping chickens, it's more people keeping chickens. And it's more awareness and it's more education. Because if you take it into perspective and you look at the possible suffering that can happen in a backyard when people don't have the education they need, and you compare that with the just unimaginable suffering that is happening in factory farms, I think if I were a chicken, I know which one I would choose. And that, that's tough, okay, because we don't want to make that choice. But if we continue down this road where uh, most of the people in this country are getting their eggs from factory farms, that suffering is going to continue and it's immense. It's not good for chickens and it's not good for people. We have to educate people and come up with solutions so that we will have a sustainable way to move forward. There are many people who will say, look, it's too expensive, you can't afford it, you might make mistakes, so don't do it. But when I see that, what I'm hearing is that you can't afford this, so it's not for you. And at that point, it becomes an issue of class. I believe that no matter what your income level, you deserve to have this experience. You deserve to have some fresh protein in your life every single day. I think what a lot of people don't understand um, is that because of this crisis that's going on right now, there are people out there that are missing out on the only source of fresh protein they will get in a day. And a lot of those people, people are children. And so that is why it is so important to me for us to come up with solutions. Because we can say, yes, this is expensive, but we need to counter it with, how are we gonna fix it? You know, so that we can make this experience possible for everyone and so that our future can be more sustainable for, for us and for our children. Not only do I think everybody should have chickens, but I also really feel very passionate about people in the city and the suburbs getting chickens. So I have a whole playlist about keeping chickens in the city and in the suburbs. You should click right here. It's 100% friendly backyard chickens education and entertainment, and I know you're gonna love it.